A lot to get to, but we begin with law enforcement on high alert ahead of tomorrow's far right rally in support of the January 6th insurrectionists. Fencing, once again, has been put up around the U.S. Capitol building and around the perimeter of the Supreme Court. Capitol Police are preparing extra security ahead of the Justice for J6 rally. Ask for the National Guard's assistance as well should the need arise. A DHS official said earlier this week the event is expected to draw about 700 people. Meanwhile, CNN obtained a copy of an unclassified intelligence briefing from the Department of Homeland Security that was shared with state and local authorities, which reads in part, we are aware of a small number of recent online threats of violence referencing the planned rally, including online discussions encouraging violence the day before the rally. NBC News has not yet confirmed that reporting. Here is what House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had to say about tomorrow's rally. They're going to come Saturday again. They have their plans to come. Everybody will be ready more ready for them. Uh, I'm so proud of our Capitol Police and other law enforcement who saved our lives. I mean, it was all that close, who saved our lives. But I, you know, I'm, a, I'm the speaker, I have ch threats all the time. But, so I'm not afraid for myself, but I was afraid for my other members and for the staff and for the workers in the Capitol. They were traumatized by this assault on the capital of the United States, a temple of democracy for the world. Speaker Pelosi in England yesterday. Let's bring in senior reporter for NBC News, Brandy Zadrazny. Brandy, good morning. It's great to see you. So you've been keeping tags on these online forums where these groups who planned and plotted January 6th also organized. What are you seeing this week? What are you seeing this morning in terms of tomorrow's planned rally? Well, it's, uh, it's some good news. You know, we're not seeing any signs that we might uh, usually see before a large national scale political rally, MAGA rally, extremist rally. Um, we're seeing basically really underwhelming um, <laughs> posts, really limited to people nearby, people who are talking about this rally that you'd usually find in these circles, Proud Boys, QAnon, um, MAGA, anti-vaxxers. Actually, they're saying to stay away. There's a conspiracy theory that this is actually a honeypot or some sort of plot by the feds to entrap people to commit crimes. Um, there's really barely a whimper out there for the real target audience. I talked to Jared Holt from the Atlantic Council's DFR lab, and he's just saying really the local energy is already preoccupied with community issues like in Portland or anti-mask vaccine rallies. So people are just too busy. And it's really important to note that um, unlike the January 6th Capitol attack, where it was really a bunch of different factions all sort of coming together under the um, umbrella of voter fraud, of the stolen election conspiracy theory, and really asked to be there by President Trump. No one's really doing this. This um, event is actually just planned by this guy. His name is Matt Brainerd. He works for this organization that he founded called Look Ahead America. And, you know, he's a former Trump campaign operative. He's sort of a, a C-list player who jumps from um, MAGA cause to MAGA cause. He raised $650,000 last year to investigate the stolen election. So um, this is a money-making enterprise, and it's really important to remember that. And all of this media attention really helps him to do just that. So, Brandy, former President Donald Trump echoed yesterday that conspiracy theory that you just mentioned about this rally being a honeypot so the feds could uh, arrest a bunch of people. He also is condemning the criminal prosecution of hundreds of his supporters who took part in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. In a statement yesterday, Trump wrote, our hearts and minds are with the people being persecuted so unfairly relating to the January 6th protest concerning the rigged presidential election. In addition to everything else, it has proven conclusively we are a two-tiered system of justice. In the end, however, he wrote, justice will prevail. Didn't specifically mention tomorrow's far-right rally in the statement, but as we said in an interview with the Federalists, he described the rally as a setup, said the media would use it as an excuse to bash Republicans. Um, so what is the next plan here, Brandy? Because you monitor this stuff so quickly, obviously, Capitol Police, Washington is much better prepared tomorrow th than they were on January the 6th, and that might deter some of these people from coming here. But these groups and these people, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, everyone you mentioned, aren't going anywhere. So what inspires them right now? What drives them? 
Um, it's really a culture war is happening right now, and that's where we're back. You know, there is no national election right now. We're, we have the midterms to look forward to, of course, but we're a culture war is being waged right now. We're seeing it in L.A. with anti-trans protests. We're seeing it uh, in front of hospitals, children's hospitals, um, with people. Um, protesting against the vaccine. We're seeing it at school boards with Proud Boys and extremists, people without children who are coming to these school boards um, because it's a flashpoint for the current culture war right now against so-called critical race theory. Like we are seeing these groups. And so the fact that there is a, um, you know, gate around the Capitol right now is a sad, you know, reality of the, play of the, the, the environment that we live in where we have to be vigilant. Hey, Brandy, it's Jonathan Lemire. We enjoyed the little peek there from your little visitor uh, on your shot a second ago. Um, but switching to a more uh, serious uh, matter, we, of course, have known there's been some dates, right, that some on the far right have been circling for a while. January 6th, of course, the biggest. It was teased weeks in advance. This one here, this rally, even if it does seem like it might be fizzling out here in D.C., but certainly there's been weeks of hype around that. We've had various QAnon theories, the certain days where Donald Trump was going to become president again. Is there anything on the horizon once we clear tomorrow and hopefully clear it without any violence? Is there other dates on the horizon that law enforcement is concerned about that have taken hold in the conspiracy theory land where that fear could lead to violence? Well, there's not a particular... I have a friend. Apologies. <laughs> well, there's great. not a particular day that we're looking for necessarily, but you have you get the gist of it, is that we're always moving the goalposts here, right? So right now, there's not a specific date that we're looking to, but, you know, get back to me in a week, and I'm sure there will be something, some conspiracy theory that... Um, you know, some wild ones on the internet are looking towards for, you know, the, the return of their savior, their messiah, Donald Trump. <laughs> All right, Brandy, we'll let you go. Somebody's looking for their Fruit Loops, but you did not miss a beat. Mommy's talking about the Proud Boys. Senior reporter for NBC <laughs> News, Brandy Zadrozny. Brandy, thanks so much. We always appreciate your report. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.